Hey guys, my name is Loveless, and uh, this time we are going to be reading a different type of story, uh, not the normal ones that I do. This one I actually asked ahead of hand before even trying to attempt reading it. Um, I asked the author if I could read their stuff, and they said yes. I do plan to give the author the link to this so then they can at least see it, even if it gets out to pretty much nowhere. Sometimes that happens, but it's like, whatever. Uh, it's going to be nice. And also, it pushes out someone else's stuff who's not as popular as, like, the big stuff that are actually on AO3. So, so that goes. And the title is Feel Real by L. Stark. So, yeah. I also make sure to put that in the description and everything. So, it'll be all good to go. Katsuki was tired. Parts of his body ached as if they've been skewered with a hot poker. And his head, his head was throbbing to the beat of his heart. And God, he was so tired. Are you okay? A voice like a distant dream asked, water sloshing around them. Katsuki realized only then the unpleasant feeling of his lower body was caused by his pants being completely soaked in. It would have been bad if you hit your head. The familiar voice continued. Kotsky raised his eyes from his soaked lap to the hand offered to him, to finally face that he'd been carved on his heart for the past decade. Four-year-old Izuku. Four-year-old Izuku gasped. Kachan, you got so big! He hopped from foot to foot, splashing water everywhere. Is that your hero costume? Are those grenade hands? That's so cool. Katsuki reached out, clamping down on Izuku's shoulder to still him and huffed out a laugh. Yeah, this is my hero costume. And these, he said, showing his gauntlets a little better. They store my sweat so I can make bigger explosions without hurting my arms. Izuku's eyes practically sparkled timidly reaching out to skim the tips of his fingers over the gauntlets. Sugoi, he whispered reverently. Katsuki felt his heart stutter and drop. This kid, his Deku, has always been so fucking sweet, and Katsuki was a monster to him. Izuku, his voice rasped. Hmm? Izuku hummed questioningly, still distracted by Katsuki's gauntlets. He looked up with no sound came from the older boy in front of him. Between a blink and the next, his bottom lip wobbled, and tears started to stream down his rosy cheeks. Before Katsuki had the chance to understand what happened, Izuku had closed the distance between them, climbing onto his lap, giving Katsuki barely enough time to take off his gauntlets and steady him before he fell backwards as he stood onto his feet on Katsuki's lap and clumsily wiped at Katsuki's face with tiny hands. Don't cry, Kachan, he said between hiccups. Kachan brought his hand to his face, and only then realized his eyes were leaking tears. Izuku patted Katsuki's head. Did you hit your head after all? Maybe, Katsuki said, letting himself lean on Deku's bony shoulders, breathing in the fresh powdery smell of Izuku's shirt. Kachan needs to be more careful. Azuku reprimanded, gently combing through Katsuki's hair as if he was looking for a bump. Katsuki leaned back suddenly. You can't leave, Azuku, he said urgently. He wasn't sure why he felt it was so important to tell him that, but his heart was throbbing as if not saying it wasn't an option at all. As if Deku didn't promise him he'd stay, everything that made Katsuki who he was would come apart at the seams. Kachan hasn't called me Izuku in a while. Deku's smile was gentle. Am I not useless anymore? His face was so goddamn open, generally curious, and not hurt at all from the meaning Katsuki had given him that stupid nickname all those years ago. That shattered Katsuki's heart. Once and for all. You were never useless, Izuku. He rasped. I'm sorry for ever saying that you i was a dumb kid okay i was cruel to you and i'm so so sorry izuku gripped katsuki under his chin and forced him to meet his eyes 
Azuku's baby face was scrunched up in a frown. Don't be mean to my Kachan. He pawed at Katsuki's face, trying to wipe away the tears that at some point started leaking out again, smearing them all over Katsuki's face instead. Besides, Azuku's face softened in a usual gentle smile. I'm the Deku that tries his best, right? And for a moment, he sounded just like older Deku. Katsuki's Deku. It's my hero name now. How did you know? Katsuki's heart started pounding again, and he realized Deku never promised not to leave. Deku, you can't leave. You have to tell me you won't leave. Tell me- Bakai Kachan, Izuku interrupted, gripping his face between his hands. Where would I go without my Kachan? He smiled brightly like the sun when Katsuki leaned into the small palm. I'd get lost. I'd get lost too, Katsuki told him. It felt imprimitive for Izuku to understand that. Nah, Kachan is sugoi. Deku giggled, and before Katsuki could deny that, Izuku stood up on his tippy toes, smooched the top of his head. When I get hurt, Okasan gives me a kiss, and the hurt goes away like magic. Katsuki blinked. Did it work for you, Kachan, too? Izuku inclined his head, just like a puppy. Katsuki nodded, mutely. Strangely enough, it was the truth, too. Okasan knows best, Izuku said, blinding him with another of his stupid smiles, and slid off Katsuki before he could even say anything. He dropped onto the water with a merry splash and turned to Katsuki, his little hand already held towards him in offer. Let's come out of the water, he said. And finally, Katsuki accepted the hand, the corner of his mouth tugging up in a ghost of a smile in answer to Izuku's bright one and letting himself be pulled out of the cold to the warmth of his childhood friend. Izuku blinked awake. His whole body throbbed and ached, but when he tried to lift his arms, he found he could. He sighed, relieved. He didn't remember what happened that landed him in the hospital bed yet again, but... Whatever it was, it must not been that bad if he can still move. The sound of quiet sniffling and hiccups alerted him that someone else was present. Stupid Deku. A small voice that Deku would recognize anywhere muttered between sobs. Deku sat up, eggs forgotten. Kachan? The four-year-old version of Kachan was rubbing his eyes a breath away from Izuku's hospital bed. He took his hands away from his face and looked up. Deku? He asked, voice trembling. Izuku was sliding off the bed and kneeling in front of Kachan before he could even think to move. Kachan! He reached out, but stopped right before touching, not knowing if it would be welcomed. Kachan made the decision for himself, stepping right into his space, taking a fistful of Izuku's hospital gown. Deku! He shook him, his chubby face scrunched up in anger. I called Deku's stupid name 58 times and you wouldn't wake up. I'm sorry, Deku said, wiping away the wetness on Kachan's face with his thumb. Don't cry, he whispered, his heart aching a little when Kachan's tears kept leaking out. I'm not crying, Kachan sniffled loudly. Who said I'm crying? Azuku couldn't help a choked little laugh. My bad, sorry. Kachan took a deep, shuddering breath and stared at him, his tears finally stopping. He reached out at Zuku's face. Stupid Deku is crying too, now. Ah, uh, sorry, you know me. Azuku huffed out with a small smile. If Kachan's hurt, I hurt too. Kachan squished his face between his small palms and leaned in. Baka, he proclaimed with his serious little face. Azuku held Kachan's hands between his own and leaned into his palms, smiling brightly. Yeah. Kachan huffed and grabbed Azuku's hand. Come on, get up. I don't like it here. Let's go away. Azuku looked around and only then realized how odd the place they were in was. It was gray. Just empty grayness. His bed being the only thing occupying it besides the two of them. He frowned, thinking it was odd. 
but Kachan had started to pull at him, so he got up looking to where Kachan was pointing. There was a doorway emitting a bright light, which Deku thought was the only reason why they weren't completely plunged into the darkness of grayness. Kachan stopped walking after a few paces, and Izuku looked at him in askance. Kachan stared at him hard, then reached out with both arms towards him. Pick me up, he demanded imperviously. You're big now. You can. Izuku tried really hard not to coo out loud, and in the end it came out as a choked off squeak. He bent down quickly to obey, afraid Kachan would change his mind otherwise. Once Kachan settled on Izuku's hip, he pointed towards the doorway of the light and said, Let's go, kicking his feet a little. Izuku let himself marvel at the warmth of the small body he was holding, the tickle of Kachan's spiky hair on the side of his neck, soothing some part deep inside his chest. And he walked them towards the light because really, when was he ever going to refuse his Kachan? Deku led them through a narrow dirt path, never letting go of Katsuki's hand until they reached a patch of grass. Deku let go then, to take a few steps on it, his feet curling on the dewy grass as it revealed the softness of it. Only then did Katsuki realize, Deku had no shoes on. Deku, where are your shoes? The little weirdo didn't design him with an answer, just proceeded to hop from foot to foot his giggles a palm on Katsuki's heart. It's so soft. Come here. Come on, he said, making grabby hands at him. I already said that. Katsuki kneeled in front of him because he didn't know how to refuse the little nerd at this point. But as soon as he did, Izuku gasped and his eyes were already brimming with tears. Kachan, what's wrong? What's wrong? Katsuki was half panicked, already picking Deku up, checking for wounds. You're hurt. Deku whined loudly, one of his hands reaching to touch at Katsuki's neck. Katsuki frowned, putting Deku back down now that he was okay to check on himself. And sure enough, his hero costume was gone, replaced by a hospital gown. Sharp pain in his stomach alerted him that there was a companion wound on his neck. He wondered for a moment at how he was wearing something different from his hero costume and found it odd that he was feeling pain and noticing these wounds only now. But the thought was fleeting, hard to gas like soap bubbles bursting before he could even touch it. Deku brought him back to the present moment, getting in Katsuki's space like no one's business. He was still crying silently, his face a mess as he gingerly touched the bandage on Katsuki's neck. How'd you get hurt? I, Katsuki wrinkled his brows as he thought hard. You, older you was fighting a villain. And the villain was about to hurt you really bad. And I didn't think my body just moved to push you away. He finished, thinking he was remembering it right. But not to being obviously sure, it all felt like a distant dream. His head was pounding again. Kachan protected me? Deku asked, his eyes shining, and Katsuki's chest might have just cracked open then, his ribcage gaping, showing his bloody pumping heart for Deku to whatever he wanted with it. Yeah, he said, the corner of his mouth tugging up a lopsided smile. It's about time, huh? No, Deku yelled, giving Katsuki a heart attack. As the little boy barreled into him, the tiny fist closing on Katsuki's shirt. Kachan got hurt because of me! He wailed, smothering his sobs on Katsuki's chest. Katsuki wrapped one arm around Deku and rubbed his back with the other, never so glad to them being free of his gloves and weapons. But baby, if I hadn't, you would have gotten really hurt. Baka, Kachan, Deku said between hiccups. Don't you know, still? His eyes were so wide and wet. When Kachan's hurts, I hurt too. 
he said, letting go of Kotsky's shirt with one hand in order to bring it to his own, right above his heart. In here, it hurts so bad, he told him, his face scrunching up as if the pain was unbearable. Kotsky hugged him closer and rocked him. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, he whispered. But I don't regret it, okay? I'm sorry, but I don't, baby. I do it all over again because you're alive. He pulled Deku back so he could see his face. You're alive, and that's all that matters. Deku, if possible, cried even harder at that and wrapped one arm around Kotsky's unharmed side. He mumbled something, and Kotsky strained to hear him until he finally caught it. My hero. Kotsky buried his face in Izuku's curls, too overwhelmed to even pretend that the kid hasn't just sledgehammered through every single one of his defenses and managed to etch himself in Kotsky's very bones. He held him closer and his voice rasped when he replied with, and you are mine. The doorway led to a vaguely familiar narrow path framed by tall grass on each side. Izuku could hear the sounds of trickling water from a little stream nearby. Kachan had settled in his arms as if he were at home, with his head comfortably leaning on Izuku's shoulder. From time to time, he would turn his face into Izuku's warmth and nuzzle his cheek against Izuku as if he were a kitten looking for pets. At one point, Izuku had given in and dropped a kiss on top of Kachan's head and almost immediately froze when he felt baby Kachan tense. He waited, holding his breath, and then he felt Kachan relax and reach up to hold Izuku's face between his little palms. Kachan had peered up at him. Do it again, he demanded in a little impervious tone. Needless to say, Izuku had stopped walking and proceeded to smooch the kid with years and years of pent-up affection in the form of little kisses all over Kachan's face. The sound of Kachan's little giggles was magic to his ears, and Izuku's chest was so full he thought it might crack open. He'd never heard Kachan laugh so freely and unbashedly in front of him. Kachan settled back down then, and they resumed walking. Izuku didn't know where he was going, he just followed the path and the sound of water, cheek resting gently on Kachan's. Kachan settled back on him. Then they resumed walking. Izuku didn't know where he was going. He just followed the path and the sound of water. Cheek resting gently on Kachan's soft, spiky hair. For the first time in a long time, Izuku felt at peace, completely in utter content. And then baby Kachan jolted, straightening up so fast Izuku had to lean back, barely avoiding Kachan's head from hitting his chin. Deku! Kachan was kicking his feet and elongating his body, trying to turn himself into a wet noodle and make it impossible for Izuku to hold him. Okay, okay, I got it. Izuku huffed, putting him down. And as soon as he did, Kachan sprinted down, calling out, Deku! Izuku picked up his pace, following the little kid, confused. Kachan, I'm right here. No, I'm talking about my Deku. Kachan was kind enough to explain. Izuku blinked, still at a loss. But before he could ask what he meant, he heard another tiny voice, his own tiny voice, calling, Kachan, and stared as a four-year-old version of himself showed up out of nowhere and barreled into baby Kachan with his arms open wide. Kachan's own arms were open wide, and Izuku watched as the two children hugged each other as if they hadn't seen uh, one another in years, and as if they were each other's absolute number one favorite person. Izuku thought he could have melted by the cuteness of it all, but also sighed wistfully, wondering what it would feel like to be hugged by Kachan that was the same dimension as him. Baby Izuku was living the dream as far as Izuku was concerned. And then, Deku? A rough voice sounded to his right. Izuku turned his eyes wide towards him. Gotcha! And he knew in the moment for sure that everything, all of his dreams, because older Kachan, his Kachan, 
wrapped him in his arms and hugged him hard, cheeks squishing against Izuku's own as if he would never want to let go. Deku, Kachan repeated, choked. Fuck. Izuku agreed with the sentiment and reached around to hug him back, afraid Kachan would let him go too soon if he didn't. Kachan, hey, he sniffled. He was so happy. Are you crying? Kachan leaned back to look at him, smirk when he saw he was right. Nerd, he teased softly. Shut up. Izuku smiled brightly, then gasped, catching a glimpse at Kachan's bandage. Kachan, you're hurt. You're one to talk. Kachan snorted, looking pointedly at Izuku's everything covered in bandages. Come, he said dragging Izuku towards the grass and pushing down on his shoulders until he sat down. From where they were, they could easily see the younger versions of themselves playing together. Baby Kachan was holding baby Izuku's hand as they observed a ladybug on a strand of grass. Izuku lied down on the grass, smiling to himself and feeling utter contentment settling deep into his bones. I don't think I want to ever wake up from this dream. Whose dream do you think it is? Kachan is still watching over the younger versions of themselves. Mine or yours? Izuku frowned, opening his eyes. What an odd question. Mine, of course. Kachan turned to look at him with raised eyebrows. What makes you so sure? You hugged me, Izuku said simply. It earned him a glare from Kachan. Fuck you. What? Izuku sat up. You'd never be caught dead hugging me if it wasn't a dream of my own subconsciousness. Dream of me hugging you often, huh? Every day, Izuku admitted easily, because it was his dream. Kachan stared at him at a loss for a moment, then looked away, grumbling lowly to himself. You're so dumb. Izuku laughed, humming contentedly. I guess. Do you know where we are then? It's near the little stream you fell in, isn't it? He looked at Kachan, his gaze soft. Did you accept my hand this time? Yeah, Kachan said, his voice rough. That makes me really happy, Izuku told him softly, watching the gentle breeze ruffle Kachan's wild mane. I'm sorry it took me so long to reach back out to you, Kachan replied eyes wet and honest. Izuku hugged his knees to his chest, leaning down to rest his cheek against them, looking up at Kachan's small smile. I was ready to give you another decade. Ha? Huh? Kachan looked at him indignantly. You thought it'd take me that long to come around? Like I'm some kind of loser who can't deal with his own shitty feelings? Izuku shook his head, laughing a little. No. I was just ready to give you all the time you needed. Why? Kachan asked as if it was punched out of him, breathlessly and searching Izuku's face for some clue. I don't deserve it. Not after everything I've done to you. Izuku glared at him, straightening up. I've already forgiven you for that, and you made it up to me time and time again when you helped me train these past few months, and then... He choked suddenly, remembering how Kachan got those wounds with the bandages were covering. Kachan, you shouldn't have done that. You don't need to atone for anything. Spare me, Kachan snorted. Four-year-old you already yelled at me for it. And fuck you, he matched Zuku's glare with one of his own. I wasn't thinking about atoning when that shithead was about to skewer you like some piece of meat. He stared at Izuku right in the eyes as he went on. It just happened. I move before I can think, like you did when I was caught in the sludge. Same thing. So don't sit here, even think about scolding me when you did the exact same thing. Izuku held his glare for a little while, then sighed, the fight going out of him. His vision blurred. I don't like it when you get hurt because of me. Tough shit, asshole. Oi, don't cry on me now, he added when he noticed Izuku's tears. Sorry, Izuku mumbled, rubbing his face on the top of his knees. You're so embarrassing, Kachan said while combing lightly through Izuku's curls. 
his touch so soft and careful as if they were trying to learn and memorize the feeling of it against the pads of his fingers. Kachan, you have to know, Izuku said, heart in his eyes, leaning into Kachan's touch, ready to spill everything out, because it was okay. It was a dream. I love... Kachan covered his mouth with one of his hands. Not here. He glared. Wake up, Izuku. You gotta wake up. I don't want to, Izuku whined. I like it here. Well, I like it when you're not in a fucking coma, Kachan snapped. And if you care about me, he continued slightly choked off, then you'll wake up. Izuku reached out to grasp Kachan's hand in his, dropping a kiss onto the battle-worn knuckles. If that's what Kachan wants, then he trailed off glancing one last time at their four-year-old selves as they giggled and said goodbye to him before he closed his eyes, laying back down. He felt and heard Kachan laying down beside him, their hands still interlocked. The breeze caressed his damp face, and he felt the similar softness of Kachan's hair on his neck. Wake up, Deku! Izuku blinked awake, to the steady beep of machinery he was more than familiar with at this point. He tried to move, immediately groaned in discomfort. He didn't hurt exactly, but his body felt like it weighed a ton. He stared at the ceiling blankly for a while, trying to assess if his body could feel anything at all. After a while, he realized that something soft, sort of fluffy, tickled his neck, and he tried to look at it. It was a shock of spiky blonde hair. His heart stuttered to a stop, then started pounding as the event of the battle with Chigaraki came back to him. Kachan? Kachan let out a groan as he sat himself up in the chair near the hospital bed from where he had fallen asleep with his head n resting near Deku's own. What? He griped then blinked, staring at Izuku's open eyes with a blank expression before his eyes widened with realization. Deku! Hi, Kachan. Izuku laughed a little, his eyes already wet, so relieved to see his childhood friend awake and sitting up and glaring at him. You fucking shithead! Katsuki hissed at him. I thought you were gonna die on me! Not yet, Izuku said, eyes impossibly soft. Not ever, Kachan corrected with a glare. You're not going to die on me ever. I will fucking kill you if you do. Got it, Katsuki smiled. You know, you were cuter when you were smaller. Kachan's eyes widened and then smirked triumphantly. I told you it wasn't your dream. Azuka's eyes lifted. I guess it was both of ours, he hummed thoughtfully. Weird. How do you think that was possible? A quirk of some sort made us share the same dream? Or not really. It was more like we met in the same dream, wasn't it? If that's so, that's such a wonderful quirk. He smiled to himself, thinking back to child Kachan and just how adorable he was. He kind of missed him. Well, Azuku looked up at Kachan in accents. Kachan just stared at him and then glared, his jaw working as if he was munching on his words. What? You're awake now, Kachan told me. Anything to say to me that I didn't let you while you were fucking dreaming? Oh yeah, Azuku smiled brightly. I love you. Kachan's breath stuttered, the tip of his ears getting adorably flushed. Then he nodded and said, good. He looked at Azuku straight in the eyes. Me too. It was Izuku's time to get flustered, his chest catching, his heart learning how to beat to the sound of the new truth. Kachan, he said, and then more urgently, Kachan, come here. I can't move. Kachan snorted, the sound so ugly and undignified. It punched out hysterical giggles from Izuku. Kachan shook his head as he reached out to hold Izuku's face between his palms. You're an embarrassment to society. Maybe, Izuku shrugged, but you love me anyway. Yeah, 
Kachan said, nuzzling his nose against Zuku's. Yeah, I do. And he kissed him, the gentlest brush of lips against Zuku's own. And you better never forget that. Izuku tilted his face up to kiss Kachan more firmly and promised. I won't. And they were far from safe. Izuku couldn't move an inch of his body this time around, and he worried about that later. But now, for now, it was okay. Because Kachan reached back to him, and well, it was years in the making. Oh. My. Fucking. God. The amount of fluff. Ooh. The up, the amount of fluff. I am so used to angst. I didn't expect happy ending, happy be- like what the hell? And also, it's canon. It's canon to what's going on in the manga. I'm not too sure if that's actually what the anime with season five, but it's still canon. I'm, uh, I'm swooning. I am swooning, just like, hey, but I I love all the ships, not all of them, but a lot of the ships, like, you know, Todoroki and uh, Bakugo, uh, Todoroki and Deku, uh, and of course, this one being Deku and uh, Bakugo, just like, I love all the ships, there's so many ships, I'm a multi-shipping ass, also, but just, ugh. I, I loved it. At first, I was like, oh, I kind of regret having to do this because, you know, ADHD, making, uh, doing things that you want to do fucking impossible. It's ridiculous. But I'm, I'm just pushing through anyway. Uh, but it just, this was so worth it. I have all the dopamine ever. So worth it. I cannot wait to edit this. This is so worth the time that I put in frustration. Yes. Thank you. Uh, also, thank you to the author who writ- who wrote this. You're amazing. I loved it. Okay, so if you do want to see more of this, usually I do angst, but I do some fluff occasionally. You know what to do.